Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today we are going to be taking a look at a 4K HDR gaming monitor that comes in at under $500 from the guys over at BenQ with their EL2870U display. In addition to that, I'll also be going over their new e-reading lamp that you can attach to the top of this monitor or any monitor really if you want to do so. So as I said, the EL2870U is under $500 with an MSRP of $499, but it's currently listed on Amazon for $469. If you want to check it out for yourself and consider picking one up at the end of this review, I'll have a link to the sale page down in the description below over to Amazon. As far as the specs go on this guy, it's a 28 inch TN panel with one millisecond response time, 1000 to one contrast ratio, 3840 by 2160 resolution and a peak brightness rated at 300 to 400 nits, depending on if you're using BenQ's brightness intelligence mode or not. It's also capable of 10 bit color reproduction and as a result, it has one of the better TN panels I've personally tested. Now, it's not as accurate as something like an IPS, so if your primary objective is serious color work for photo or video, then you'll probably want to look elsewhere, but it's perfectly capable of handling games and looking good while it does so. One of the key features on this monitor that's going to separate it from other displays in its class is that it has HDR or high dynamic range. Unfortunately, the implementation here is also one of the monitor's biggest disappointments. To have proper HDR, you need to have a display capable of doing 1000 nits or higher for the brightness and more than 10 bit colors. The end result of this is an image that does not see a significant enough upgrade over the standard dynamic range to justify seeking out this monitor for the HDR aspect of it. Whether you want to use it for PC games, movies, or the Xbox One X, the way it's being used here just leaves a lot to be desired, and there are similar 28-inch 4K displays at $350 to $400 that doesn't have the HDR checkbox on their packaging. So if you can get past the fact that the HDR isn't great, there is still plenty here to make the monitor worth considering as it's still a very capable 4K gaming monitor with FreeSync that operates at 40 to 60 Hertz, which is pretty good. Because of that limited range, we won't get low frame rate compensation, but if you're able to stay within that target frame rate on say a Vega GPU, then you should have a great gaming experience. There were some titles I had to drop down to 1440p to get a smooth 60 frames per second, which is a good resolution honestly for a 28 inch display. So if you don't mind dropping down the resolution in some games, then you should be able to enjoy this monitor for pretty much all of your gaming needs. Of course though, you will be limited to 60 hertz as it is a 4K monitor, and we just don't have 4K 144 hertz displays just yet. So if you're wanting to do that, you might want to think about picking up a 1440p high refresh rate monitor, which there are plenty of also in the same price point of around where this monitor is here from BenQ. As far as the design goes on the EL2870U, there isn't a whole lot to complain about. I actually really like the minimalist look and appreciate that BenQ hasn't gone for any of the typical red gamer colors on here at all. Just a simple matte black and metallic gray finish that is right up my alley. The stand here is plastic, but it has a brushed finish and it feels very sturdy, honestly, even though it is plastic. You will be limited to just tilt functionality, but thankfully there is a 100 by 100 vase amount on the back if you want to invest in adjustable stand or a monitor arm. For connectivity, there is a display port in as well as two HDMI 2.0 ports and finally a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. They didn't include any USB connectors on here, likely in an effort to keep costs down, which I'm totally fine with. I've honestly never used a monitor's USB ports in my life. Let me know down in the comments if that's something you usually take advantage of on a monitor, if it offers like a USB 3 inputs for the monitor itself. Uh, I also like that the power supply is internal here, so you don't have to worry about a huge power brick underneath your desk. The bezels on the front are a bit chunky at 16 millimeters wide on the top and the sides, but the display itself does go right up to the edge of the bezels, which is nice to see. The on-screen display was fairly easy to navigate using the buttons on the bottom side and offers a good range of customization for color calibration if you want to get in there and really tweak things to your liking. 
On the bottom right, there is also a button for activating and deactivating HDR mode, and a second click will enable BenQ's brightness intelligence, which will dynamically adjust the screen's brightness based on ambient conditions in the room that you're using the monitor, which is detected by a small sensor that is right beneath the bottom of the bezel. And having the HDR button here is nice, which because you won't really have to go fiddle around in the Windows display settings to enable high dynamic range. You may also notice I have this desk lamp on top of the monitor. This is another product that BenQ makes that retails for $99 and it helps to illuminate your desk so you can be able to read papers or a book when it's dark. Um, you can adjust the brightness of the light in addition to the temperature if you wanted a warmer or a cooler light shining down on your desk or whatever you happen to be working on. It mounts very similar to the way that a webcam would, so you can use it on pretty much any monitor and it feels very well built and sturdy. My one concern before setting it up was that it would shine down onto the monitor screen itself, but the way that they designed it is so that that does not happen. The light instead fires straight down at your desk and I personally like it a lot because it means I don't have to have a desk lamp taking up unnecessary real estate. Getting back to the monitor though, I did want to emphasize how good of a TN panel they are using here. The colors at the desktop and in games were very vibrant, and combining that with the one millisecond response time, ghosting is going to be a non-factor for all of your gaming needs. I'll also say that for a TN, the viewing angles were surprisingly good. There is some color shift at extreme side angles, or if you are looking at it straight downward, like if you're standing up, but I don't see that as being a big issue with this monitor because I tend to use my monitors by sitting right in front of them. And as I said, the side angles, you have to be at a pretty extreme side angle to see the color shift take effect. Unlike some displays I've seen in the past, like one of the ROG Swifts, where I could actually start to see that color shift just towards the edges of the display outside of my periphery. But that is not the case here at all on this monitor from BenQ. Backlight bleeding was also very minimal and I couldn't notice it at all with the naked eye. It was only visible on camera in a dark room so I wouldn't be concerned about it. White uniformity was also good with blacks that were decent. They're good for a TN but not as good as a VA panel which is to be, expe which is to be expected when it comes to black reproduction on a monitor. If you want the best you really gotta go for a VA monitor. My final conclusion and what your takeaway from this video should be is that BenQ has made a very solid mid-range 4K gaming monitor that comes in at under $500. It checks the box of offering HDR, but its implementation is just not great, and that's likely to continue to be the case at this price point for years to come. If you want a true HDR monitor, you're going to be looking at spending well over $1,000 to get it, but without HDR in the equation, this is still a very good monitor with a fast TN panel, nice design, and a decent free sync range for a 4K display. Because it is 28 inches, you're likely going to be relying on Windows scaling at the desktop. I found 125% did the trick without reducing the screen real estate too much. BenQ does also offer a 32 inch version at $700, so if you want a bigger display so you don't have to worry about scaling at all, then you could certainly go that route as well. But I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. Please let me know your thoughts on the EL2870U down in the comments below. If you do want to pick up this monitor or the e-reading lamp from BenQ, you can do so with my affiliate link over to Amazon down in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to leave a like on it and subscribe if you're not already. And if you have been here for a while, you can always hit the notification bell so you never miss a moment of content on the channel, and I will catch you guys tomorrow for another video. Tara.